Welcome to episode 7 of my Draculaura cosplay progress. This time, we're working on the skirts. After separating the skirt layers from my mock-up dress and then separating the skirt layers from each other, I started working with the longest skirt layer first, aka the bottom. I started by folding the skirt layer in half and pinning it so when I draw on the batwing scallops and cut them out, they'll be perfectly symmetrical on both sides. And for drawing the scallops on, I used a glass bowl and traced around it so that the scallops are perfectly round. First by using a lead pencil, and once I was happy with the positioning and how they looked, I went over those lines with a Prismacolor pencil so that the lines didn't smudge. I will never shut up about how good Prismacolors are for pattern drafting. I also made sure to write in big old passive aggressive letters to add seam allowance so that I don't forget when I cut it out of the actual fabric I'll be using. I also made sure to use extra pins on the skirt itself and the negative space so that when I cut it, the fabric didn't budge an inch and the scallops would be perfect. And now we get on to the beautiful pink matte satin I'll be using for the opaque skirt layers. Because for those that don't know, there are actually two layers to each skirt layer. There's an opaque one and a layer of sheer over top of that one. And as you can see, I had to weigh down the fabric with a big ceramic bowl because it was super heavy and kept slipping off the table. Once I had my pattern piece pinned down, I sat down and took a white fabric pencil and started sketching out the 5 8 inch seam allowance I was going to need to hem the skirt. And once I got to the pointy ends of the scallops, I made sure to make it flat and tapered, square, I guess you could say. I thought it would make it easier to, you know, make the hem pointed at those ends, but it did and it didn't at the same time. It's kind of hard to explain. You'll see why later on in the video. And with that, we have our first skirt layer panel cut out. And in case you forgot, I'm making each skirt layer in two panels to reduce bulk at where it's going to be attached on the dress. Now before we sew the hem, we gotta fray check it, because Matt Satin loves to fray. And if you don't know what fray check is, it's this liquid solution that you put on the edges of fabric to prevent it from fraying. You just take your fabric and you squeeze the bottle a little bit and apply it to the edge of your fabric. And I know it's gonna leave a very obvious stain, but don't worry about it because once it dries, it's barely even noticeable and we're gonna hem it anyway, so nobody's gonna see it. So, you know, don't worry about it. And now we can actually get started on the hem. I'm just folding the fabric back and pinning it in place. Now if anybody plans on making this cosplay for themselves, I'm warning you right now, the fabric is going to fight you quite a bit because the scallops are a curve, and the fabric naturally does not want to be curved, but you know, that's what pins are for, and you're just going to have to maneuver it around until it doesn't fight you. And the same maneuvering method will apply when you actually start to sew it on your machine. But before we do that, sewing pins can only do so much to keep it in place, which is why we are going to base stitch it down. And base stitching is just a long, very loose straight stitch that keeps the fabric down while your machine's sewing it. Because sometimes sewing pins are just not enough to keep fabric in place. Especially since you have to remove the sewing pins as you're sewing fabric. Don't sew over the pins with your sewing machine. Speaking of which, after that, it was time to machine sew it, and I made sure to sew on a scrap piece of fabric first to make sure my thread, length, width, and tension were good. Now, I cannot stress this enough. When you're sewing curved edges, go slow and take your time. Trust me, you have nothing to gain and everything to lose from trying to rush it, especially when you get to the pointy ends. Because I know it looks like I'm going fast, but trust me, this footage is very, and I mean very, sped up. Because in reality, it took me a good 20 to 30 minutes to hem this entire skirt panel. Because I really didn't want to mess it up, and I was trying to avoid sewing over top of the base stitches so it was easier to seam rip. And half an hour later, this is what the hem looks like on the back. And after sewing that, I got to seam rip the base stitches, which was a dreadful process that I did not feel like filming. So we are now immediately moving on to ironing the hem. And it's important that you iron the hem on both the back and the front, because the tension that the curved edges create will cause the pointy ends of the scallops to curl inwards or upwards. And ironing them on both sides helps correct that. And the setting that I used on my iron is the silk setting. And after what felt like forever, we now have our first skirt panel completely finished. 
And if you're worried about the wrinkles that are along the curves, there's really nothing I can do about that. That's just due to the tension. And here's a nice close-up of those nice clean stitches and the pointy end of the scallop. It looks so good! And now we're going to repeat that entire process with the sheer fabric that's going to go over top of the satin. Honestly, the camera does not do it justice. Now, something to keep in mind when cutting sheer fabric is that it loves to move around. It is a super finicky fabric. So whatever the amount of pins I used to pin down the satin fabric, I needed to use double for the sheer. So that it would stay where it is and it wouldn't move. And this is what it looks like all cut out before I hem it. Now this captures the sparkle in real life perfectly. And of course, before we pin it, we gotta fray check it. You especially need to fray check your sheer fabrics because it is the world's worst fabric when it comes to fraying. It frays on the same level as chiffon. Another thing to keep in mind is that it's gonna take the fray check a lot longer to dry on the sheer than it did on the satin because satin is a tighter weave and more absorbent and sheer is a much looser weave. And the fray check staining is going to be a little more obvious, but trust me, it's not going to matter once we hem it. And from there, I just repeated the exact same process of pinning it and base stitching it with a lot more pins, and then sewing it down. I'll be with a little bit more maneuvering because, like I said, sheer is super finicky. And then I ironed it down on both sides, also using the silk setting and with a pillow underneath. And once both panels of each skirt layer were hemmed, it was time to assemble them together. And that was just a simple straight stitch down the side with 5 8 inch seam allowance. So thankfully, I did not have to base stitch those down before I sewed them. And after that, this is what the first skirt looks like all assembled together. And this is what it looks like with the pink sheer layer over top of it. I am so excited. It looks so freaking pretty and a perfect color match to the actual doll skirt. And from there, I did the exact same process over again with the middle and the top skirt layers, except when tracing out the scallops, I used a medium-sized bowl on the middle layer and a small, regular-sized bowl on the top layer to make the scallops smaller in ascending order. Because if I used the same glass bowl for all of the skirt layers, there would be virtually no fabric left for the middle and the top skirt layer, and the scallops would be way too big. Plus, it's more accurate to the doll dress anyway. But besides that, like I said, same process all the way through, with the exception of the sheer layer of the top skirt. Because after I get the pieces cut out and I get it hemmed and everything, I am not going to be sewing the panels together, and you'll see why in a minute. And while I'm at it, if you ever decide to make this cosplay for yourself, fair warning that the smaller your scallops get on your skirts, the more the fabric is going to try and fight you. And it also means that the pointy ends are going to curl in a lot more, so you're just going to have to use more pins and maneuver it, and don't worry about it curling in so much because the ironing is going to fix that. You just gotta stay calm and trust the process. It'll work out. And here is where I show you guys how the square end approach to the pointy bits of the scallops did not work out. Because it leaves a teensy piece of excess fabric where I folded it down. So I took my scissors and snipped it off and then went over it with fray check just in case I cut off the bit where the fray check was. Also, while I was in the process of making these skirts, I made sure to put each uh, pair of skirt layers on a different coat hanger so that I knew which skirts belonged to which layer. Because I knew if I didn't, I was going to get confused. And I also took this shot of a pair of the skirt layers fully flared out so that you guys can see it in its full pinky sparkly splendor. Because I don't think my shot of the piled up version on my table did it justice. And now for why I didn't fully assemble the black sheer layer. This black sheer skirt layer is going to be the base for the black embroidered lace that's on the very top of the skirts. And luckily I already did the guesswork and drew out my design for the lace months in advance to save myself some time. So now I can go on ahead and start translating it to scale. First I busted out the top skirt layers pattern from earlier and taped together a bunch of pieces of notebook paper big enough for the pattern to fit on top of. And I taped them together using masking tape instead of clear scotch tape so that I could draw over top of it. 
And then as you can see, I traced out the pattern and cut it out. So now I have the exact size canvas I need to work with. And then I just marked out a section and started drawing my design. And I also marked out where the seam allowance is going to be so that I don't draw beyond that point because a lot of parts of this design are going to be hand embroidered and it's going to be a lot harder to attach it to the skirt via machine sewing if there's a bunch of embroidery thread in the way. So it was best to just mark it off in advance and not touch it. Anyway, I'm only drawing one section of this because it's just going to be the same design repeated over and over again. And that's what it appears to be on the dolls. I also had to make a few adjustments to the placement of certain things here and there because the positioning of the scallops that I had in my head when I was drawing that months ago is not the way the scallops are positioned now in real life. But thankfully it was only a few minor things and I didn't have to completely overhaul my design. And the areas that I'm scribbling out are where I'm going to be putting machine sewn black thread for filler. And after a few minutes later it was done. And when you compare it to the original design of my sketchbook, not much changed, just that the design had to be a little bit shorter. And then I went over top of all of the lines with a black Sharpie marker so it was easier to see over top of the black shear. And then I went on the back of that piece of paper and traced it again with more Sharpie markers so it was a perfect mirror image on both sides. Which brings us to a stopping point, because next time we are going to start on the lace. And I'm going to be using a combination of ribbon, lots and lots of ribbon as well as a lot and i mean a lot of black embroidery floss thank you to everybody that stuck around for this long and i will see you next time <laughs>